like an awkward Sunday evening where all shit goes, <laughs> you know what I mean, it all goes wrong. Just need to make sure I'm not going to end up getting some lawsuit against me on this. My business used to be me and a business partner and unfortunately that relationship went a bit, a, a bit sour. We just stopped really getting on and communicating. You have to sit back and you have to take some of the wins and some of the losses and you have to praise the wins and with the losses, unfortunately as the boss, 99% of the time that usually ends up meaning that it's costing them. Welcome to the Arnold Fitness Games 2022. You ain't by the fast life, huh? big dogs dead is what you stay like. So I think we called every forklift hire company in the north or in Yorkshire at least. Um, and no one could get one to us at that late notice and on a Sunday. There was certain mess ups with Ragnarok that cost me quite a bit. I think we ended up losing nine grand on that. So that event, when everyone thinks you're a millionaire and you're a baller and rolling around, that event actually cost me £9,000 to put on. And this is what people don't see about these events. It was, um, there were pull-ups for the intermediate level athletes and so we had somebody come off the rig. We obviously have to make sure, you know, can they, can the workout go ahead, depending on how severe the accident was. Is. He came off at the top of a butterfly pull-up, came down, landed kind of head first and was like fully knocked out. The atmosphere was everything that we'd hoped for. The DJ was banging, the music was spot on. We reduced the movement standards down from what you'd expect from Battle from Middle Ground and I think it brought in a lot more people. Went smoother than smooth. <laughs> like a pro. <laughs> that didn't look awkward. <laughs> Yes, mate. Yeah, yeah. Very good. My name is Richard Hornsey and I'm the owner of Graft Events, Graft Gyms and what we're trying to build. We're in our sixth year or just coming up on the six year point with the gyms. It's seven years. So, I mean, my background before that was in the military. So 10 years in the military. Left, I'd say more for career reasons rather than necessarily um, business opportunities. I, I was a PTI as part of what, what I was doing in the military. I knew that I'd love to own a gym and do that. Um, very driven with where I was in the military. But then transferring that out onto Civvy Street and coming out, I think the main driving force for me was just improving what was happening from where I saw it, from an events point of view in the UK from, I, suppose, I wouldn't say initially, but further on, as I learned more about running a gym and how much I'd lied to myself about it being easy, <laughs> it was more, how do you build something that's bigger that can help more people? Um, so for the, the gym side of it is we're trying to build that into something that can help other gym owners. And with the events, it was trying to raise the scene in the UK. I didn't think it was where it deserved to be. Uh, and now it's more of, Almost like, I look at it as like a parent role, where sometimes you've got to be the non-cool dad that tells the kids what's happening. And a lot of the time we get pushed back over decisions that I make and things that we're doing with the events. But in my eyes, it's always to push what we're doing, like the event scene in the UK and the CrossFit scene, I still think has a long way to go. Um, my name's Claire Smedley. I have been working for the business since March 2021. I applied for the job back in October 2020, so mid-lockdown. 
Um, came on originally as just an event organiser. Since then, due to the amount of events that we've got going on and things, I've kind of moved up to sort of run the three brands. So Battle for Middle Ground, Rep It Out and Arnold Fitness Games that come under Graft, the event side. Um, yeah, so do everything start to finish, planning, venue searching, people management, workouts, literally everything that happens, customer services, all of it is just myself with the help of Soph. It's very tiring. I haven't slept in two years. <laughs> My name's Sophie. I'm an event organiser at Graft Events. I started off with the company helping out at an event in January, um, but then my my role progressed and I actually started working for them in March. So all of these competitions this year for me have been new. Um, each one's been slightly different and I've kind of had to learn on the go. Um, I have competed in the events before so I kind of knew the background of Battle for Middle Ground and how everything works but this has been my first year actually working from. So day to day when we're not in like the week of an event, um, I work from home every day other than Monday. So Monday we'll come into the office, we have like a team meeting, we'll do any like sorting things out that we need to at the unit that's here with all our event kit. And then Tuesday to Friday is just sort of pulling everything together for the events, meeting with sponsors, meeting with various people that are sort of have a, have a role in it. So we've got like a head of volunteers. And then when it gets to a week of an event, things get crazy busy. I'll be working like from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, um, pulling together like the final bits of marketing, final changes on workouts, getting all that announced. We get like four million emails come in from people panicking last minute that they, they need to ask questions and things. So I assist Claire with the day-to-day -day running and stuff that needs doing. Um, at the events, we all have our separate roles. It could be looking after the volunteers, it could be sorting the programming, it could be the horse off the floor. So we kind of split things. Claire admittedly does take more of it than me, um, but we help each other to get through each event as it comes. So Trinity is located at John Charles Sports Centre over in Leeds, so it's a local one for us. We ended up doing this in our second year into the event so the first year we only had two events this was our like third event through the year and we wanted something that was a little bit more open to everybody so it was direct entry rather than having to do qualifiers it was teams of three same sex teams of three because it's kind of a nice number to be able to manage without last, too many last minute dropouts and things like that, but it's a big enough number that's like kept, it keeps it fun for everyone. We have three different environments that athletes will compete in. They have the pool, the track and field, and the indoor hall, which we call the arena. It allows us to sort of blend in new movements that we don't see at other comps. We can bring in swimming, which is something that is quite big in CrossFit, but not big on the UK comp scene. Um, and then also we've obviously got the standard CrossFit side of things with the arena. It's a bit more inclusive because there's no rig. So one of the hardest parts for people in CrossFit to sort of gain is like the gymnastics side of things. So we can have people in the higher level competition where if they can't complete a muscle up, they can still come and compete at RX level. And it's just more of a fun vibe, I think, than the others. I'm not saying the others aren't fun, but I think, especially for the top end, it's a lot more serious, and we're known for being quite brutal with it. With Trinity, it's kind of just more of a feel good, have a laugh with your friends, do some cool stuff type of event. So I've got Battle for Middle Ground and Waddable Barrier Jackets in the car. Okay. Um, I'll take, we don't really need the, this chalk, we just need this. We just need the buckets. We need to find the buckets, yeah. Okay, I'll stop looking for the buckets in a sec. Just. We've got something just to help with outside that I thought so. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I put my head in, I can't deal with this as well. Oh, yeah. Look, she might need to fill in yet. What have you done? <laughs> I, hit one of the, I went to put one of the cones in the crate and it bounced off and twatted me in the head. 
you, you actually cut the skin. Yeah. You've grazed it. I can't I wait. That's going to come into our right. Yeah, you, you need one on the other that? side. So you look like a, like a. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a right egg. You need one to even it up there so you look like a little devil. We well, look well, like the, Marilyn Manson getting horns. Hell girl. <laughs> right, I'll show, I'll you the horns are just coming. You don't need to be that close. You can be miles away. <laughs> <laughs> are there any cars blocking the thing? Oh, they're going to no, there wasn't. Right. Um, the, the Enterprise car. I've Fine. changed it to 4.30, drop off on Monday. All right, is that extra? I think it's going to be £30 extra. He said, you'll leave it as it is, but if you're later, they can just change it then. Okay, So yeah. leave it at 12, but if you needed the extra time, it so would have been... I'm going to plan just to set off early, get down there for when they're open, mm. unload it, shoot back up. I can get back up for 11, but I just okay. won't be at John Charles, is the only thing. Um, um, there'll be the barrows to pick up, but we might be able to sort that with Luke, mm -hmm. with the guy from there. Um, and then there's Speedy, higher. So I don't know whether they can just sort themselves out. Well, they usually do. Look at Matt, having his proper workers brew. He's got a um, shepherd's pie as well. Got a shepherd. What pie. like that is a proper old Yorkshire fucking <laughs> for, forklift driver? <laughs> just having me cup of tea, me shepherd's <laughs> pie. Then I'll get back to it. <laughs> Can wait till I've had me twenty-five minutes. <laughs> Don't make me ring the union. <laughs> the other day, I was like half asleep in bed. Still, it was about six a.m. and uh, I, no, I heard a load of knocking. And I looked out and on the driveway, pikeys were in skip, taking any metal they could. <laughs> you were shooting it's at like them. out a window going, oh yeah, fuck again, get the fuck out. Then just saw them all scuttle off and drive off. So I'm having this next to the window now. I'm just going to start popping them off. Yeah. This is how you keep your staff in line. Yeah. You probably ah! <laughs> This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's safe. <laughs> Oh, oh what a good boss. <laughs>
So set up did go a, late, a lot later than it should have done, but we got it done. These are 25s, they're 2.5s, so you pick them up. <laughs> we'll just have a little walk here, look. <laughs> Come on, lad. <laughs> Hold on, I think I need to be, you need to be closer so they look the same size. Look how massive you are. <laughs> I'm not doing that, mate. I'm fucked. <laughs> Day one, we started in the gymnastics hall. Um, it all went pretty smoothly. There was just a couple of last minute changes to the workout. That's always quite trying. Although it's a better experience and a better workout and it needs to be done, it's a lot on the judges to sort of like have to go through the new movements, make sure everyone's aware of the changes and things like that. So I think that was kind of a key thing. The change in sort of weights and equipment meant resetting things that are potentially already being set up. Um, so yeah, the main thing is because it's over so much space and you're so limited on your volunteers and what you can expect of them, it's just a hard long day. Um, the event itself, to the athlete side of things, went smoothly. It's just you backstage rushing around. That was kind of that main thing. Everything started on time. Um, the briefing was on time. Ward one was on time. People had turned up. We had less volunteers that we would have hoped, but we kind of knew that was going to happen. So that's why we only had one workout going on at a time. I believe in previous years, you've had the outdoor workout going on and the indoor workout going on, and then athletes would swap. So as always, it was um, it was busy, it was hard work, but we got it done. So we're gonna say throw down, can like just swim with it with a brick in the hand at the bottom at the bottom, but compete are gonna have to push it. One hand push out to the front. We'll have to get in, yeah. Yeah mate. You can. Can you swim? <laughs> He's scoffing and splitting all right. Yeah, don't do that on the demo. <laughs> so basically what you're going to do, obviously the, br the brick will be in the bottom. I'll just talk through it. All you're going to do is pick it up and then put it overhead, double, head, double hand overhead, and then just walk along the bottom. So if you see, oh, if you go down so your though, feet touch. This is, this is a joke. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> you go down to your feet touch. Is that going right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They'll, they'll be moving as fast as you with the two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'd say with that as well, you see how you've got it like, like that? Yeah. If you have the head on your shoulder, you can drive through better. There's some chairs in here if you want to pull out. It's worth it. Yeah. I mean, Ireland's lovely if you want to sit a river or if you want to go sit down there. It's totally up to you. You can keep room as well, but I'm not going to be there. You, you sit where you like and it doesn't bother me. You choose. As long as I know where you are, I'll bring, I can bring them up to you if you want or if you want to come down and get them. Yeah, I'll come down and get them. Yeah, this right, is he live streaming, yeah? I'll tell you now. Yeah. Gonna do the bridge, so do you wanna live stream it and then? Make sure you get Matt's walk. Yeah. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Turn that down again. Hello, guys. Hello. Okay, welcome back to day two of Trinity, guys. Um, how's everyone feeling? Yeah, a little bit sore? Ready for a nice relaxing swim? Kind of ease their muscles back out? Maybe swallow a bit of water? Awkward. <laughs> Alright then guys, so look, first workout, we're going to go through the first two workouts. Uh, so we'll go through, explain the Aquaman in here and also the skier uh, Dr. Psycho workout oh, that's going to happen over in the gymnastics hall, okay? So you're going to complete your swimming workout here. And then at heat one, we'll have, I think it's a 40 minute window, Claire? 
40. About 40. They need to check competition corner. Yeah, so you need to check competition corner, but you should have about 40, 45 minutes. And then you'll be required in the gymnastics hall and you've got a five minute workout there on the ski erg as well. So that gives you enough time to send your Instagram stories, get dry, get changed and everything like that and then get over there, okay? So your buy-in is a 100 meter brick push along the pool floor. Only one athlete underwater at a time and any and all athletes can complete that, okay? So you can have all three in the water for that but only one down at a time pushing it. 100 meters, so that's out and back, out and back, okay? Once the brick is back here, you can get uh, your teammates out and then you can start the uh, rounds of DT while somebody starts the 300 or 200 meter freestyle swim. So 300 for compete, 200 meter for throwdown, okay? Let's go on to the movement standards then. So the brick push you've all been waiting for. You will start on the side of the pool on three, two, one, go. You will enter the pool. From here, <laughs> you will go down, emergency swim. You will go down, pick up the brick. And then from there, place the brick overhead and walk down the pool 100 meters. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Jesus Christ, how easy are you guys to fool, right? That is not what it is. Your face then. Is that any questions before we, uh, we get going? 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hero sorry. reps at the end. <laughs> they will see them. Yeah. <laughs> well, glad you enjoyed it, lads. Oh, right, let's get some of this in van. Are you going round, Amy? Eh? No, I'm just checking. Go around, so just let Claire know. I'm just getting these lots to help me put the dumbbells in. Then I'll bring the dumbbells round. I'm set, then I'll do the mats myself. The butt mats? Yeah. yeah. Or if there's anyone spare, but I just don't want to get you all, all wet moving the mats. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got an hour before I'm on over there. So if there is anyone spare, equipment wise. An hour on what? I'm competing again, aren't I? Yeah. So if there is anyone spare to help me with the mats, that'd be useful. I'll, I'll bring them back. But just like Claire know, the plan is <coughs> putting the dumbbells in and then I'm sending the crew, the judges round there to have some time off and get some food yep. before the main event on the gym floor. Yep. Okay? Thank you. It's not been bad at all. Day two's always pretty smooth. Day one is like your snagging and stuff like that. Day two always usually goes with a bit of a bit of a breeze, but I'm pleased with that one because the, the, the trouble is, especially with like having to write the workout so short, is you're limited with what you can test and who you've got calibre of athlete to test stuff. So we ended up rewriting all the workouts about a week and a half before the event. And then there's only certain stuff that you can test and only certain caliber of athletes you can test it with. So there's a lot of like guesswork then with your time caps and things like that. So by the looks of it, I was really happy with this one. They all managed to kind of get bar a few teams, which is always going to be the case, but they all managed to get the brick push done. 95 or plus teams managed to get the swim done as well. So, and then on to the DT. So we think we had a time cap about sweet on there. Um, probably the only one where we've got the time cap a bit wrong was the, um, the handstand walk one yesterday. And to be honest, I don't think we got the time cap wrong. I think we just put too many reps of like the DT and dumbbell snatch in there first. But again, it was really good to test that caliber of athlete to that limit where they, they couldn't finish the workout, which is always good. So yeah, Friday night didn't go anywhere near as smooth as I'd like for the setup. Um, there just seems to be like, I don't want to come down like Hitler or anything like that, but I've been doing this a lot of years and I know, I know roughly how long stuff takes. And there seemed to be too much of a laid back attitude that was like, hold on, we're not going to get done on time. So I had to be a bit of an arsehole really and crack the whip a bit. But um, we've managed to do that. We're still building the barrows now that we started on Friday. 
and that's why I've been pushing so hard because I understood how me and Neve sat down and built one of them and we realized how long it takes to do one and how many we had to build so that's why it was like right we need to get stuff moving more because we need to have crew on this um, so yeah the setup could have definitely gone better in my eyes been a few snagging problems but on the whole from everyone that I've spoken to at the event they've, they've really enjoyed it which is a big part for, like for me it's an entertainment business like we're here to make people have a good time like challenge them push them with workouts but they're here to have like you know a really good time and enjoy themselves and um, Trinity I definitely think is like good for that because it's just it's more community based, it's a little bit more spit and sawdust, it's not as technical as other CrossFit comps with uh, gymnastics and stuff like that. It's more just kind of like old school, have a laugh with your friends. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going well. So all the dumbbells are on there now, aren't they? So if I fire that round now, quickly throw them out, and then I'll come back for the mats. Right, I'll shoot that round now then, it'll be two secs. Right. Claire's been on it. I don't hundred percent know um, what the score is with it. I think she's on about using the electric one. So we're gonna have to suck it and see and see what happens. But the big thing for me is I've got to be. So the whole point of me, obviously, like taking the team on Claire and Sophie, is to try and get this business to the point where it doesn't really need me. Like it's probably gonna be like an awkward. Sunday evening where all shit goes you know what I mean it all goes wrong so I think what we're probably going to do I haven't told them yet I'm going to tell them on a team meeting on Monday but my plan is with rep it out that we've got in Sheffield this year is I'm going to end up saying to them that I'm not going so that they've they kind of at their own own ends on that Gym. one kind of make sure it goes with no flaws keep the reputation of graft events without me being there and See how it goes, yeah. But um, hopefully, it's kind of a more positive way of doing it, of just saying, right, step up to it. Claire? I'm just gonna quickly... I need the judges. They're coming over, they should be coming over. Um, Lunch is at two. Reggie's in two? Lunch is at two. Lunch is at two. I thought they'd be getting some food now and then going on to that one while Skierg finishes. No, there wasn't time for the skiers. Because of changing it all, this is how it has to go. So we have to brief this while people are still doing the skier one? Because we have to add in the heat. Okay, okay. When does this one start? Or when do I brief? When do I have to do a brief? So what, 11? Oh dear. So we need to really be briefing it now. We can run over, we've got, we've got a 45 minute break between these two, if so we, we need to go over by 15 down. minutes, yeah. But you need to tell Maureen so that she does the food for the time you're planning it to end. Are the judges, what, are the, are, is everyone coming over now? Yeah. Right, so I think there's going to be a cha change of plan on the food thing. Okay then guys, if you want to come over to the main floor, I'm going to quickly go through the uh, Second, the seventh workout, Cyborg, and then we can start getting heats going on that while we finish off the last heats on the ski. Okay then guys, let's, uh, let's get this brief going. I'll come down this way a bit. This seems to be the bigger crowd. Gonna get the, uh, the brief going. It's a nice, simple workout, this one, so it'll only take five minutes and then we can get cracking back over there and start getting heat one going through here. Okay, so workout seven is Cyborg. So this is a 12 minute time cap. It's three rounds of you go, I go, six D ball cleans, 60K for men, 40 for female, and then 600 meters on the rower, 500 meters for female, okay? Then into three rounds of uh, six D-ball cleans again, but this time 400 meters on the rower and 350 meters on the rower. And then the last round is three rounds, so a round each of six D-ball cleans and 200 meters to finish. So it's another descending sprint one, like you've not had enough of them already, okay? 
They're going to get a heat going now because we've got five minutes anyway. So. Is there any decent footage on that, John? Have you, have you, is that the GoPro? On there? Oh, no. Oh, is it? I was wondering whether there was anything decent on it. There you go. I knew, I knew we'd get some kickback off of one of those. Obviously, everyone has their own scorecard. Athletes will finish their workout, look at the score, sign the scorecard. They then might go away and go, oh, I think I did this, or somebody videoed and I got, I, I've counted an extra rep or whatever and come back. But technically, if they've signed the scorecard, they've agreed to their score. So, you know, sometimes it's a bit like, well, if you've signed your scorecard and you've come back and gone, oh, I think I did 400 more reps, like, you, you have to be a bit like, come on. We're sort of collecting all the scorecards off the judges. We have someone that was a runner that does that. And then we have a small team that will then input it all into, we've used this year competition corner. They'll just have to sit there, hand type in the scores exactly as it appears on the scorecards. There's a lot of reliance upon things being written down correctly, people marking up the scorecards correctly. Obviously in the heat of the moment when they're on the floor and they're judging, handwriting can go a bit amiss. And there's that kind of thing you have to sort of like run around, catch a judge, chat to them. But the athletes see it and then emotions are high, they're competing, they'll come over sometimes nicely, sometimes not so nicely <laughs> and complain about it. And we'll, go, we'll have to then go through all the scorecards, go for it again, check with all the judges again check against any videos they have or anything like that. Every event you'll have somebody query their score. There's, there's no way to have an event without at least one person. If it's just one person, you've done really well. So that, that would be all it was from that pretty much. There was one team that got a swim score of like something crazy. Like they did the swim so quickly, they should have been like an Olympian swimmer. So <laughs> we kind of changed that. So I think Trinity went pretty well um, from like our side and from an athlete viewpoint. Saturday we ran to timings, everything was smooth. Sunday we ran to timings, everything was smooth. The workouts I think we really went down really well. We had to make some last minute changes when we sort of gave them the go, but they worked out for the best. So, Arnold's, in my eyes, it's probably one of the best. Arguably the biggest one of the year. This year we had Matt and Tia come. Three days of competition, so it was the longest event that I've ever worked on here. Welcome to the Arnold Fitness Games 2022. We've done loads to try and drive this documentary. We tried to kill someone. There's a massive international dispute going on. Like, you know. <laughs>